Suppose you have a normal Rubik's Cube. Then, you decide to glue some of the pieces together. You stick big plastic stickers to those cubies. And now they are joined forever. Or until you take the stickers off. What kind of a puzzle is the thing now? Can you even still turn the faces? Well, sometimes you can. And then, you can't. But there is always enough turning available to keep you going somewhere. And that's what makes the puzzle really, really interesting. And really tough. In this video, we'll discover the amazing structure behind the bandage cube. And it all starts with a graph. To understand the puzzle, let's forget for a moment there are any colors at all. This would make the standard, unbandaged cube, pretty boring. No matter what turns you make, it looks the same. The bandage cube, however, changes its look even colorless. It's because the various larger blocks change orientations and move around. This is something fundamental. We should keep track of it. We will write down all the colorless configurations and how the various face turns move between them. Let's start at the solved shape. I colored the center pieces because they can't ever move away from their positions, so the colors do not need to be ignored. We can turn the up face. We have a new shape, so we write it down. We can turn the face again. And again. And again. And we're where we started. We can do the same for the right face. And for the front face. Don't forget we cannot ever turn any faces on the back side of the cube, as they're bandaged into one big block. Now let's choose one of the discovered shapes from which we can move further. Soon we have a shape where we can turn all three faces again. That's nice. Exploring move by move, we get deeper into the puzzle. It seems easy, but if you did it by hand, you could get lost in no time. Now we're back where we started. To make sure we found all possible shapes of the puzzle, we need to try every face turn on every shape. Of course, this is easiest done by a computer. As we complete our search, an amazing picture emerges. You can use it to navigate the puzzle while solving by hand. Let's say you get a scramble, and the shape is this one. You just need to locate the shape in the graph and follow a path to the solved shape. Let's see it. As we see, that doesn't mean the puzzle is solved, because so far, we've ignored the colors. We've seen that coming back to the solved shape doesn't guarantee us that the colors are right. The only chance to swap the colors is to trace out one of the non-trivial loops in the graph. Note that the symmetry of the graph comes from rotational symmetry of the bandage around the cube's space diagonal. Therefore, any of the symmetric loops can be executed by a same sequence of turns, just on a differently rotated cube. Amazingly, you can check that any of the long loops doesn't change the colors at all. So the only moves that swap colors are the three short loops. That is, one loop and its two rotations. Let's number the movable blocks. You can find that the selected short loop, and therefore every short loop, swaps blocks in a five cycle. In other words, block number one moves where block number three is, block number three moves where block number two is, and so on. Last block moves to where first block was, and one block stays in place. The rotated moves result in rotated cycles. We'll call these the green move, the yellow move, and the orange move, based on face color of their starting turn. Compositions of these three moves give us all possible scrambles of the puzzle. Computation shows there are in total 60 of these. Because the composition behaves nicely, we call this collection a mathematical group. Now our task is, given any scramble, to figure out how to undo it using a combination of green, yellow, and orange moves. For example, let's have a scramble with two pairs of swap blocks. You can check it is solved with, yellow move done twice, followed by green move done backwards. Note the minus sign, indicating traversing the loop in opposite direction. This is pretty random though. There's a more logical, and consequently, longer approach.
Secondly, you need to be able to do it not just for this single scramble, but for any of the 60 possible scrambles. I don't want to spoil this final part of the puzzle for you, in case you want to try it. I'll post a link in the description to my write-up of a full solution. Note that, in my opinion, figuring out just this one part of the puzzle is still harder than figuring out the whole normal Rubik's Cube. And we're talking here about a puzzle that only has 70 to 60 scrambles. That's a laughably tiny number compared to the number of scrambles of full Rubik's Cube. It basically looks like zero next to that number, yet the puzzle is hard. That tells you something about bandage cubes in general. Because, so far, we have only seen one bandage cube. From many thousands. Pick this scramble from the cube we've seen. Resticker it, keeping the shape, but making the faces single colored. It's a different puzzle now. Or is it? The puzzles have the same bandage graph, and it can be shown that the solved shape of each, upon suitable block numbering, allows for the same block permutations. The way these permutations are represented as face turn sequences is different though, that can certainly challenge your practical solving process. But even if you discount puzzles coming from a same bandage graph, there are thousands of different bandagings. It's a whole world of unique puzzles. Often just a minor change in stickering completely upturns how the puzzle feels, scrambles, and solves. Bandage cubes are in general much harder to solve than a normal cube. Normal cube is often viewed as hard enough, but you just need to grasp some group theory insights, such as permutation powers and disjoint cycles, conjugation, and commutators. These are fancy words for something very understandable. I may do a video on it later. The key for group-based methods, however, is that you need to be able to turn any face at any time. This is just not true for bandage cubes. But if you collect loops around a shape in the graph, as we did, these do work as group elements, as they can always be composed. Bandage cubes thus combine elements of graph theory, which is the mathematical theory of network-like structures, and group theory, which is the mathematical theory of symmetry. By the way, this graph comes from a much harder bandage than the one we've seen. We have only begun to scratch the surface here. If you want to know more about bandage cubes and other puzzle and math topics, don't forget to subscribe. If you have math background, note that we've just seen both definitions of a groupoid in very tangible terms.